Hey everybody, this is Petey from the Spinner Rack, and today I'm doing a video on John Burns' Next Men. Now, John Burns' Next Men was a um, series that he started with Dark Horse, that um, after a couple projects was ran into some editorial interference, he wanted to do a series where he could start fresh, you know, and do, you know, all kinds of stories in the sci-fi sci sound kind of genre. But, you know, with a little bit of editorial in the press. Not too much, but, you know, not what he was dealing with at Marvel. So, ultimately, he came up with a, a, the character, which is the next men, which they have five of them, and they have their um, sort of leader, their Professor X, in Tony Murchison. So, I can get to, I'm going to get to their names, but ultimately... And we'll get to this other project, 2112, in a second. But um, in this project, you can necessarily see um, John Byrne calls himself a writer, uh, writer who draws. And we have an introduction in this complete. We have, um, he says, he kind of he voices words to, those, to that opinion. Unlike most writers... Unlike most writers of prose novels, of which John is one, John writes with pictures as well as words. His skills as an artist allow him to fully pull off the novelistic standards he sets for himself. A good novel evokes time, place, and character. Surprisingly, few artists working today can make, these, make their work consistently do this. John is one of them, right? So that basically, and we're gonna, if I can continue doing these, we will get to other artists of his peers saying the same. So John Burr's plan was to initially do this through Dark Horse Presents. At the same time he started this, he was also doing the X-Men, which didn't last too long, but um, he was doing, he was, you know, I guess scripting the X-Men. But the first four, chapters appeared in Dark Horse Presents. But at the same time, things weren't working out on his project Marvel World of Tomorrow. So he decided to bring that to Dark Horse. And since that was already done and been <laughs> on the shelf for a while, John Byrne got to do this. And as he was going along, he said, you know what? This seems like a precursor to the next men, and he could dovetail it together. So I'm not going to get to too much of 2112. 2112 is about Agent Red. Um, his name is Tannen. And he basically meets Thomas Kirkland, who's one of these um, cadets. Right? We're not going to get into too much. This is pre-image. So this has Steve Olive coloring, which you know from... Um, was it from Swan? Now there's some stuff in here that Byrne thought was a little too heavy handed and you can see uh, airbrushing, but it's the first sort of, in the, you know, where you could see where he was gonna become big. A lot of cool stuff in here, but basically the main villain in this is Satanus, right? And as they go into a final battle with Agent Red and Tannen, this has, sorry, even though it says Next Men, it has more similarities to, even I guess you could say the original X-Men, but it has a lot of similarities to the New Gods. So the New Gods, the Forever People, Darkseid and Orion, and this idea of meeting in the fire pits, all that stuff is in here. Right, so there's a big battle between Deathstrike and um, Agent Asian Red, and it ends sort of dramatically. It's sort of a, a legacy. You find out that Agent Red is now become a, a, a legacy character, and then there's a um, the destruction of the villain. Right, so we're not going to go in order. Because I'm going, to, I'm going to show you this stuff as 
it was done in the um in the what's the name let's move this out of the way how it was done in in the trade paperback right so we got this stuff here we go to next men six right because burn worked it this way but he got issue one which had a lot of the action this one gave you some of the history in zero which is the dark horse presents um since um four parters in here and then as the first story went with all the action burn did this story which is sort of the fill in the gaps so we'll start with here so if we remember where we ended we ended in 2112 and then now we're gonna the point whole reason why i'm not spending too much time on this because there's going to be a lot of stuff in here that we're going to see later, right? So you don't want to spend too much time here, right? See, this crater has been made. Everything is gone, and they've stopped Satanus. But Tannen is not, is not going to assume that Satanus is dead. He can't trust them, right? So we enter... We got the station. When something happens, and a lot of street, there's a lot of storytelling here, without words, without a description of what's going on. It's seemingly like an earthquake, and this is one of my favorite issues. This is burn stripping down all of the burn sort of finishing, and just be really getting to the storytelling. It almost has levels of um. Steve Ditko and um, who's that? Um, who's that? Um, Joe Kubert. But it's really stripping down his art to just really gain, gain the layouts. And I, even though people would complain about the inking, I really like this one, the finishing on this one, even though it's a lot rougher and the characters are less handsome. It's sort of like a, if this guy came into the business and um, he might not be as popular. But he was a, character, a person who could basically draw anything, right? And we see all these characters out in the snow. And it kind of, you know, the, you realize it's not that, but something has happened. And they're going to see what it is. And when they get there, they get all these misshapen things, which is the mutants that were also in this story, which kind of gives away everything if we go to that. Because I read this afterwards. And then they find this character. And he is the same character doing the same thing that was in 2112. That's the only sort of tidbit I'm gonna give you, right? And then he goes back and he sees someone he knows. And he says, everything is perfect. Everything is, so Georgeson is alive, he survives. But then he meets, this is the key central figure which we met in and uh, the issue one, which you'll meet a little bit later. We have Aldous Hilltop, right? He helps out um, Fleming Georgeson. He gets this crater out, and he see he meets Satanus. Uh, Satanus, and then he gives Fleming Georgeson, no, he gives um, Aldous something he wants: power. And he's interested. So, of course, he helps out Satanus, giving him energy so he can survive. But then there's his disappearance of his wives. This is the, um, the trading card. Talk about the struggles of his marriage. Of his romantic life, but then of course, runs into someone tougher than he expected. He's about to end the relationship, and then he kind of wants to show her something downstairs in the basement. And we know what that means. And then of course, we have these underage mothers who can't afford to keep the baby, so they're taking these babies for this project which is Project Next Men, and it's not working. 
So we find out that these guys are the worst type of guys. But, of course, they're racist, so they don't want to do it with anyone except white people. So, this down on the girls. You're talking about getting younger and younger mothers. And then Fleming goes out. This is something I'm going to re resonate for later. Fleming says he's going to make sure a, a balance happens. But then Fleming, Georgia's son, is dead. And all this is like I didn't do it. And then they find out that the information they get, they're sort of talking together. There's sort of this network that's happening who's similar to something like the Matrix, right? And then, of course, it's going to take him a while, maybe 20 years before this is a success. Right, and at the end, there's always the next. The other big thing about the next man is the letter page, which I think um, Bendis makes. Uh, Brian Michael Bendis makes an appearance. I'm not sure, and then it's because the flame, the flame is about so high. Right, so now let's see if we can get through this. It's only ten minutes in. Right, so yep, twenty years from now, all this is gray. Let's see, um, let's see, these uh, have to be shut down, even though these are the most successes they've had, right? And then, um, so the hint that um, John F. Kennedy was going to shut them down, he says, no, luck had nothing to do with it. Right? And then they're waiting for someone from Washington. They're waiting for the bastard from Washington, from J Street. And they find out they meet Tony Murchison, who they thought was a guy. And they come in. They look around. They see the large cows. And, um... Tony sneaks into a spot and does something that she sees something. Then we're introduced to Nathan and Bethany. He shows he has power to look up at the stars. All right. Then we also see, <clears throat> so in reading this, there's things that you see in issue one that you not I wasn't sure about. But they're able to create anything they need. We meet Jack and Jazz. And then we gave you Danny, and these are the five next men. And then, of course, Jack shows he has strength, hits somebody, breaks it with his strength, it hits Bethany, but Bethany doesn't feel anything. And then Jack, and this Jack is, Jack and Jazz are kind of the center of this series. And they're kind of the, Jack is kind of the glue, but he doesn't stay forever. And Jasmine's kind of the center. And she comes up with a way for them to not have any struggles while they're making or they what they call dancing. And that's another storytelling element. So then he's holding on. And then at the same time, Jack busts out and he says, where the hell is he? But he's gone, right? And they're like, did he fade? He's like, no, he didn't fade. Don't think about that. So we find out these tombstones, fading is possibly people dying or thing of reaching. And then we see Bethany and she disappears. She put then they free all of them. And this is burned playing to his weaknesses. So you have him here. Everybody, most of the characters don't have hair. And you can still figure out who's who. That um, you have Jazz, Jack, Danny, 
and Bethany has her hair, but it's not um, as long as she normally has it. He says it feels like touching knives. Jack still has the strength. Um, Nathan can look through the doors. And then Tony runs into him. She's shocked by these guys. And of course, she also fused someone's hand to the door. And um, all this doesn't care. So they get out of the way so they can stop them. So they're trying to shut this down. Right? She got a hint from somebody. She's shooting back at them. They're about to escape. Everyone's escaping. And Bethany is hit. Jack then starts taking people out. Takes Tony with them. The next thing you know, then the car and the next one have never seen the car before. And of course they have a rest rocket launcher. That's it for them. So see this was issue covered issue two. So I'm still jumping around. Right? Keep going. How far are we? 16. Doing doing a little better. So here it is. This is my first meeting of the next men. It was a cool cover. This would be the last we kind of see the sort of fine line that Byrne would use sometime. A very thin line here, right? Which would, I mean, I guess close to what he was doing in the Hulk. Right, so they're driving away. See the guys set, up, set the rocket launcher. They get out the car. And then they're getting shot at. Bethany looks like she's still in the car. Jack gets up. Tries to make their weapons like you did in the greenery, and he's shot down. Bethany's still alive. She can take bullets. And then Jack. Then Danny runs off. Then we got a great shot of them two with their head shaven, and we can tell the difference between his eyebrows and sort of the face here. Yep, so it's not someone who's afraid of his weaknesses. But you can see some similarities. He's trying to kill them, but Bremer, he realized that Bremer is the one who got the word out. So the next one would be freed. Right? That they have a problem. Then, of course, the local police come. And we find out that's exactly what. All just wanted. He shoots Bremer in the head and he's out of here. And he's running and then what? Senator did I leave and he sees that. And this is a different stage for Byrne. Because Byrne usually does very pretty people dying. And this is where you say this is the testament of what you're gonna start to see. Some really rough stuff from Byrne, not pretty people sort of posing and while they're dying right which is sort of comic book death and they see the whole place and blows up and then the police are like they're taking over the situation and they find out jack is still alive and jasmine uses her power and i think that's i think that's um is it that tommy and they're kind of surprised at the jump and Jack wakes up. I tried to make their weapons. And he says he's not fading, right? They decide they're going to take them in. And the next one have kind of calmed down. They say something's going on. This is an element that was never sort of um, dealt with after that. Which is what happened, how Jack's body handled the bullet. And then this is where you get to see that the next men's are kind of the next men are kind of conspiracy nuts. They're kind of because they're talking about um, town is one way, and um, Tony sent Jack, um, Danny the other way. And then he kind of runs dies, and his feet are hurting. Something he never experienced in the greenery. And he runs into 
this old guy who's um William Dunk what was it Ducklements. Willis Ducklements. And he helps out um Danny and takes him away, right? Oh, and then also another tidbit here is that Danny is speaking to himself when he's here. All these pages, he's speaking to himself. But then it sounds like he's talking. And he says, he can't make a blade or try to cut and then he says, a sharp rock? But that's a question. Yeah, maybe I could find... Hey, look. So it sounds like he's talking to someone, but he's talking to himself. Right? Or maybe it's something else. Right? Tony's in a bad way, but this is not the worst we'll ever see her at. As it goes on, all these characters get punished beyond what we see here. And the villains that come in. Right? So the doctor's going to take care of them. And the rest of the next one go to jail. And they say they have names. And they say their names. And they're like, that's like code names. And they kind of feel like they were kind of born today. And then Danny tells Willis that um, Tony was shot. The black woman was shot. And the cop and the doctor are talking over things. And they say, yep, we gotta start talking to them. Of course, as I said, the next men are conspiracy nuts where they don't trust anything. They're about to get out. And um, he figures out they need to cut through it. Something cut somebody earlier. So, talk to, to um, Jack. And at the same time, Danny's legs are growing as the second goes by. Right, so get some baggy pants that just fits them. And while they're still talking, going all over everything, the next men have already escaped. And they're running around and they decide they have to split up. Now this could be terrible for them, which it is terrible for some of them, right? So they're okay, they split up, and she sees dance all night. Now, she was already dancing with Jack, so she wants to see what that's about. And then, Nathan decides to be a little more incognito, he gets some shades, and then, of course, Bethany goes the wrong way and winds up with the, attacked by some bikers. Now, we're back to the senator. And the senator goes home. He sees, oh no, what are you talking about? He's acting like he doesn't know what happened. He says, this is horrible. Yes, Amanda. Yes, it is. Then he goes in the basement. Remember, he was going to the basement without the issue? And he said, um, now all this is worried, but, um, once you set the next one in the world, you know what their training is involved in? Yes. I designed the, the, the network. They revealed that Satanus is alive and well. Right? So obviously things don't go too well at the hospital by this cover. And I think this one is the one that really kind of said this was it. Right? Especially this one, they go to Gilders' bar. These guys, and she talks, she don't understand what they're talking about, but they're trying to be, do nasty things with her. This guy is uh, Mo translated into the next man, Mo from The Simpsons. He says, You want to dance with me? He's like, Dance? Oh no. <laughs> so, um, busted out of a nun shop, and Mo decides. That he's going to have his way. And then she fights back. And her nails are invulnerable also. So it rips the skin apart. 
So Mo was all upset. And Bethany, this is something Burn used for Wolverine. The All Red Kill Shot, which is using the comic book color for effect. Right? That's what the other things should be. And Mo is dead. Then someone tries to grab her hair. There, that's invulnerable also, but it's thin. So it's Ashley rips through the guy's fingers. She tries to escape, and they're like, all right, we're gonna burn this. This woman. Then of course, we're introduced to Action Max. Now actually, Action Max was supposed to be a comic book that George Perez was gonna draw, but nothing came of it. I think the market crashed, so they kind of bowed out. But as the old school color, Characters' colors changing from page to page, which is kind of like the mood coloring. And um, <laughs> Danny doesn't understand that superheroes aren't real. And they, they find a hotel to stay at. But then the doctor comes in. And he's like not really happy with what's going on but at the same time he calls her by the wrong name he calls her Alice and her name is Margaret and he's like what and he said I'm not Margaret I'm Alice I'm not I'm Margaret I'm not Alice right then they're going back and forth you find out that the doctor has some issues so this is a nice storytelling bit I'm giving some characters some time on the screen, and he took him off the sedation. It's like, oh no, she's not happy. And the next thing you know, and this is what I mean. Well, I call him conspiracy, but they're very skeptical of everything. So at this point, he knows he's been drugged. So then he's really upset, and he's getting tossing her around. Then they're killing her, asking her questions. He's about to run and tell someone, of course. Jack has to take him out. So you killed him. And then um, Tony, who we met earlier, she's not looking too good, but she hears the commotion and Jack wants answers. And he says, stop. And Jack freezes. He knocks her out, takes her clothing, and they have to get out. At the same time, Willis doesn't look like he is who he says, right? So Nathan comes out of nowhere, takes him out, said, he's your friend, like your friend. And then here, you have the vice president and the, and the plane explodes. Issue four, we got three to two, no, we got two to go, right? So they go to the hotel. He thinks that Tony is a prostitute. So she is really upset with that. Uncle Miss is um, getting hogtied. They see Jack, but he looks like he's in a trance or something like that. So they take out Tony and then um, then Nathan, then um, Jack wakes up and says, no, she's here. To, she's going to help us. Then um, Jazz goes in to the old dance all night and sees that it's um, just, she doesn't know what's going on. So then someone comes on and realizes that she's a, one of the, the so-called terrorists that's been reported about. And she's a um, volunteer deputy, so she takes in Jazz, who's not prepared, locks him to the car, and they're driving off. But the whole hog heaven is burnt down. Remember that what was going on? So we have Bethany. She frees... She frees um, Jazz. But now the president decides that Aldous is going to become vice president. 
He needs a man like him by his side. And that's when all the events work perfectly. Right? He says, Satanus knows everything. So he's been predicting the future all these years. Right? Keep going. Talks about, let's worry about the people. And it's like, does he can't afford to be sentimental. As they go along, they're on the outskirts of town. And Bethany falls down. Then Jazz follows. We see an alien looking creature. Then Bethany pulls her in. Then they see all of these skulls and the thousands of children, babies, baby skulls. And then they're talking. He says her name, Jazz. He says, Jazz? Jazz? Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. That voice, it can't be. David. And then they go over different things about what's going on. But at the same time, the police are there too. So, coming to our end. Issue 5. And we see... But well, we'd find out about fading, right? So we're back in the greenery. And this is one of the things that John Burns next one where there's flashbacks to what happened at all. And it's Jack and Jazz playing around. But then there's this guy here. And this is kind of an older guy in the greenery named David. And he's more interested in helping helping Jazz meet her full potential. And Jazz has longer hair right now, and Jack is kind of not understanding what's going on with her, because she's not a tomboy anymore. And she's getting close to reaching, but we see something is happening to David. And David is trying to say he's better than Jack. And he says, something's happened to you, right? So we see David, and he's like, whoa. <laughs> What happened? And then they think he was eating babies, and he was like, no. How can you think such a thing, Bethany? Right? So they're there. All this damage is done in the town. You realize... Jazz and um, Bethany are out there, and they're held up in this hotel. Now all this, she's talking about the... Who is this? Amanda's talking about everything that's happening, but they're going to celebrate. So he's kind of using his power against her. They want to talk about him reaching. And he's like, no, he don't want to talk about it because he knows what happened. Usually people fade. They get into this big fight. Once again, you'll see Byrne doing his new, no longer pretty people getting beat up. Someone just mangled, right? Face finished. But at the same time, it's say he's fading, right? And we get to see what's fading like, seeing someone pass in the greenery. And then there's a new auto, so he starts hearing stuff, and then he's dropped. And then, like many next men before them, all of the test subjects being tossed away, right? So his, his body changed. He's almost like a an alien that people would see and then he would hide and steal and do stuff like that but then um, this is actually underneath because they had some of their lab with their dump off sites further from the actual installation so that wasn't destroyed right so now they're hiding the rocks and they can see them right so they're shooting at them they're, they're locked down so then Jack is coming to help. So then he's deciding that he's going to use the explosives that didn't go out, that he diffused. That's why this thing didn't blow up. He diffused those bombs. And then he's like saying, so he's going to de detonate the explosives himself. He doesn't care. And then, of course, um, Danny comes to help. And they say David's around. 
Then there's a big explosion back in Washington. They're talking to the president. Um, Willis doesn't say what's happened when he talks to the president, but then he says he's going to keep a watch on him. Right? So then control goes to a thing and he says it's a whole new ball game. Bang. Six, I already showed you. So that's it. There's the first six issues of the next men. And um, hopefully I'll do some more of these. And I'll read the next passage from Frank Miller. That's going to talk about Burn as a writer who draws. Thank you. Bye.